Moto America on BN Sports is presented by Dunlop and the all-new Sportmax Q3 Plus. Now you don't have to sacrifice mileage to get top performance. Dunlop Q3 Plus and powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Welcome back to Utah Motorsports Campus here in Tuella, Utah. We're getting ready for Supersport Superstock 600. Let's not delay any longer because we know Hannah Lopez is down on the grid right now with someone very special. Hannah? That's right. I'm here with Shane Richardson, a new face in the Moto America Racing Series. He's with us for the entire season. We were just chatting a bit earlier, and he mentioned he's not used to racing in this heat. It's also your first time ever racing at this track, but you managed to be leading one of the sessions early on yesterday. So what are you looking to improve upon today? Um, basically, we just got to keep learning and keep pushing forward. Um, you know, every track we go to this season is new to us, being the first time here in America. So, you know, we're having fun nonetheless, enjoying the journey. And whatever the results be, whether they're good or bad, we've always got a smile on our face. So for this race, we just want to try and improve on yesterday's finish and try and finish on the podium. All right. Best of luck to you, guys. All right, Shane and the crew from New Zealand Such coming all the way guys. over here. Great guys, three of them traveling yep. around the country, doing their thing and just wants to compete. And I think they're really dodging winner, Jason. They're dodging winner in New Zealand. Yeah, they're absolutely dodging winner. And this guy's going to win a race by the end of the year. He's really impressed me yesterday, as, as uh, Hannah alluded to on Friday. Uh, the very first session of the weekend, you know, I go out there and I watch every session. That's all I do on Fridays. And he was fastest after the first session of the weekend he'd never been here before so i always tell you there's no such thing as a home track advantage to really good riders and he's just proved that case again this rider right here garrett gerloff is thinking about yesterday's start wants to put that one behind him definitely and make sure that he doesn't repeat what happened he got a good start but like jason mentioned in the highlights the door was open as both jd beach and garrett gerloff went wide and then valentin debees came sneaking up and that gave jd beach the gap it's going to be a different story here today sunday's race at utah motorsports campus we're going to take a break on the other side we're going to get race action going don't go anywhere Superstock 600 race action, getting ready to get going here as you can see that the grid is starting to clear, which means riders soon will be out on their warm-up lap, take the grid, and then go. Jason Urebe right there, who had a very interesting ride yesterday, kind of hot streak and ran wide. But let's take a look at the Dunlop starting grid right now. Garrett Gerloff on pole position at a 152.428. Not the track record any longer. Jason. All three of these guys broke the lap record in qualifying, then they went faster in the race. Uh, Daytona Anderson heads row two with Benny Solis and Jason Uribe, like you just talked about. Uh, would be interesting if they made some changes to these guys' bikes. Uh, Michael Gilbert, Jason Aguilar, Jody Berry are on our third row. Then we got row four, Shane Richardson, JC Camacho, who put a great last few laps charge in yesterday for that podium. Nick McFadden looked good in warm-up this morning on row four. Row five, Connor Blevins, Andrew Lee, who's working on some new setup stuff, and Ezra Bobier. Great to see Ezra uh, here at Moto America round. Then we got Ashton Yates, Caroline Olson, and Brayton Ort on row six. Uh, back there on row six. Row seven, uh, we got Kinzer Naylor. It's Kinzer's first ride this year with us, too. Robert Pierce, who qualified on time. We've seen him in the last chance qualifiers. Brian Dobro Dobrowalski. Brian, I'm killing it. I'm sorry, Gage Reese. Brandon Cleland. <laughs> Nolan Lampkin, again, wins the last chance qualifier this morning. Uh, Jarrett Nassini, Ryan Richardson, Ryan Harper, and John Knowles round out our field today for, uh, for this 15-lap race. A good solid 10 rows of riders to participate in this race. And a good look at the reigning champion, that's Garrett Gerloff. And in terms of the championship is, by the way, after this race, it's going to be just marks the halfway point of the season. Uh, one point the difference between Garrett Gerloff and J.D. Beach, both riding for the Monster Energy Yam the Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha team. Of course, Garrett came in here with a four-point advantage. And with that difference from first to second yesterday, J.D. Beach holds on to that lead. Three wins on the season so far for Garrett Gerloff, four for J.D. Beach. J.D. Beach, of course, actually the all-time winner in Moto America history in its two and a half years in existence. 19 race wins so far for J.D. Beach. Amazing, it? Amazing. It, absolutely and, incredible. And I remember J.D. riding an attack performance Kawasaki yeah. back, what has it got to be six or seven years yeah, ago? Yeah. And uh, so he's been around a while, and 
nobody has ever questioned JD's talent. And uh, you know, when he gets on a run, Greg, when he starts getting on a roll and sniffing victories, it's, he's hard to beat. And this year, believe it or not, I feel like Garrett has actually stepped his game up. Last year, he got off to that big lead in the points. And then we saw Garrett kind of settling, not really settling for second, but JD was just gone. And he would have to settle for second, I guess is you know what I'm trying to say. This year, Garrett's got his head down from, it doesn't matter who's, who's ahead or who's behind, Garrett's running the lap times. Let's take a look at JP's keys to the race presented by Kawasaki, because Jason, I know there's a few things here that you're gonna be looking at in terms of what's going on in this race and what those keys are. Yep, absolutely. Thinking about the keys to the race today, and, and for me, number one is that got Garrett Gerloff has to get off to a better start. Yesterday we saw what happened with J.D. Beach getting a, 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 a bit of a jump on both him and, and Valentin. Uh, Jay, uh, Garrett's got to go off with him. We, met, we heard Garrett even say that, you know, Valentin's going to take his shots while he can. Garrett doesn't want to be part of that today, okay? So that'll be the first key to the race that we were going to be looking at. I think uh, talking about Valentin, is his bike better? That's that's a question that we're going to have to see. We heard in some of his pre-race comments yesterday uh, about how he felt about what the bike felt like. And, you know, that could have just been something. Could have been a tire. Could have been anything. I know that crew down there is working really hard. And, uh, you know, you put a mic in a rider's face right after he's come off from being beat by 21 seconds and he's used to winning. Uh, sometimes we, get a, we, we, we can say some things. And uh, I know today, hopefully that bike's going to be better for him. Aguilar times two. And the reason I put this is, will this guy be our fourth double winner of the year? So far in Superstock, we've seen three guys do the double. Jason Aguilar won very, very convincing yesterday. Didn't look like he was slowing down at all either this morning in warm-up. He was quickest again at the Superstock riders, and uh, we're going to be looking for Jason to see if he can do the double again. All right, those were JP's keys to the race presented by Kawasaki, and that's what Jason thinks, but all is going to be answered here in just a matter of moments. It is a long way to turn number one here, and it's nice and wide at Utah Motorsports Campus, but we hope that everybody gets through turn one incident-free because these three riders have been the class of the field. We also know that number 35 right there in the middle of your screen on a Honda. Benny Solis is also very fast here. Scored his first podium in Moto America here last year. He's been under the weather, but feels a little bit better today. Here we go, revs are up, and it looks like Garrett Gerloff kind of let that clutch out a little harshly, and J.D. Beach takes the lead, at least for now. And what about Daytona Anderson and Jason Uribe? We're going to see if those guys got better starts than they got yesterday also. It looks like uh, they're still a little bit back there. Got some super stock bikes ahead of them, but uh, leading into one, it's going to be the two Graves bikes. Uh, Valentin's going to slot back in there in third. Benny's going to try to go with these guys in fourth. I saw Benny riding with Valentin this morning. Turn two, this is getting <laughs> tight. JD wants to show his authority right off the bat. That's what he's doing. And you can see our front four have already started to just gap that back to fifth. Now, going back to Benny Solis real quick. Greg, you mentioned him being sick yesterday. He came in, he literally told his dad, do not change the bike, and he went off to the hospital. He's not been feeling well and uh, been really sick. So they didn't change anything with the motorcycle. And uh, so today, you know, we'll see if he can hang in there a little bit longer with this lead quartet. Yamaha, Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda right there, your front train, and Valentin to bees. With setup changes yesterday, obviously didn't like him. We heard it post-race that he was not happy with the motorcycle. They've gone back to what they know. So the 53 rider on that M4X star Suzuki in the mix. And Jason Garrick Erloff there in second spot as J.D. Beach with a little moment. He looks a lot more aggressive on this first lap. He did not want to let anyone pass him because he knows that in order to have a chance, especially later in this race, he's got to stay with his Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves teammate. 100% right. And right now, he's done exactly that. Now, you watched them go into the attitudes that time. JD went through the fast right hand before that, which put him too tight into the attitudes, and it let Garrett close right back up on him. So as we get ready to go through the final three turns here to complete our first lap, we got to lead for some. These three are just starting to try to break away a little bit from Benny. But uh, we're going to see if he can try to get close enough to, to stay in that draft. It'd be sure nice to see four bikes up at the front. Brand new 2017 Yamaha R6 is 95 is J.D. Beach, who was the 2015 champion. Garrett Gerloff, his teammate, the current champion from 2016. Different riding styles. Gerloff, who pulls out of the draft and takes over the lead, is more of a traditional road race style where J.D. Beach comes from that dirt track background. Now we'll get to see how well Gerloff, oh, looks like they were almost wow. roughing each other up there for a second. J.D.'s not going to just let it go. Now, this is going to help Valentin. This is going to help him a lot. This is going to slow the pace. I'll be interested to see what the first flying lap is going to be. But this is what Valentin needs. He needs these guys to battle like that so he can stay there. And then the longer the 
whole race goes on, even though we saw these Yamahas get into the 52s yesterday very late, uh, he hopefully can still stick in there with these two guys. But the fact that JD hasn't been able to get away, and here comes Valentin, he's going to try to just let these guys know he's still here. And Garrett, that's going to make Garrett probably a little bit frantic. He doesn't want to let Valentin get in front of him or get by him or any of that stuff. So uh, you can see Garrett protecting the inside line there as they head into turn six. The two slowest corners on this track, turn five and turn six, they're going to back all the way down to second gear there, but it's really got to control your mid-corner speeds. And uh, let's see if JD goes into the attitudes. Little, let's see if he opens it up a little bit here. And uh, there's a replay of the draft and pass down the front straight. This is something that with the three guys at the front, we might see this a lot, Greg, because he's able to just draft past JD, get him into turn one. But JD just like lets the brakes off and lets the bike run a little bit wide, so it's going to give him a better line to turn two. J.D. Beecher trying to get around the outside of Garrett Gerloff on that replay, 56.26. The fast lap so far here as they complete their lap from a standing start. So J.D. Beach leading the way from Garrett Gerloff and Valentin DeBees. So it's Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha against one M4 X-Star Suzuki of the Frenchman Valentin DeBees. So J.D. Beach, you can see the movement of that motorcycle as he accelerates. So there's the start finish line, by the way, if you're just watching for the first time, and that's going to determine the winner. So it really seems, Jason, like you've got to be leading coming out of turn number one. And this draft and pass move as Garrett Gerloff goes back to the lead, as long as he can hold on to that coming out of the last turn on the last lap. There's a good possibility you can win it from that position. So it's now Gerloff, the number one, J.D. Beach, 95, and Valentin DeBees on the 53, hanging out. And a, oh, oh, look at this. This is oh, racing. Oh, he lost the front right there too, Greg. He went into the dirty part of the track, and you can see the bike roll over the bumps. He lost the front, controlled it. That's going to give Valentin a little gamble here to maybe try to do something with J.D. as they head into turn five. Valentin DeBees trying to go up the inside of J.D., but J.D. knows how to play this game. He's one of the really smart racers not just going fast but racecraft jd beach has proven to us this year oh and he's in a little bit hot there he couldn't get the bike slowed down and that gives garrett gerloff a bike length so garrett gerloff we talked about this he gives away about 28 pounds yeah and you look here he's on the very inside on the dirty part of the track he loses the front loses the rear goes over the bumps there greg and uh just was he was able to get it controlled and, and uh keep the bike on the track which was good so Gerloff now, like I mentioned, he gives away about 28 pounds to J.D. Beach. And no matter how much Gerloff works out and watches his diet, he just pretty much is about 160, 158. Just notice there that they just they just started gap bouncing through the attitudes into that in, and out of that last left. They just if these guys just for one lap, just don't mess around with each other. They'll break that battle. They'll be able to sort this out amongst themselves. If you see there, Garrett gets in there a little bit wide, squares it up, very much like what we see JD do a lot of the time. You can see how tight he is on his entry there. And uh, JD opens up the entry that turn a little bit. Mountain is just doing everything he can to try to get a little bit closer. And he's right there still, Greg. Fastest lap of the race set by Garrett Gerloff. The last lap, a 152.9. A 152.9, so a little slower than it was yesterday, probably part of the heat. And it's also early days here. It's just lap number two. A good look at Benny Solis on the CBR 600RR circulating in fourth right now. Benny, his fastest lap of the race, about 1.2 behind those leaders. So Solis on that CBR 600RR also nursing a bit of, I mean, it's a nasty cold. Right? Yeah, about just as been, nasty just as it been, gets. Just been sick. Not sure if it's food poisoning or a bad flu or something, but but uh, this kid works out really hard. He works really hard. And, uh, you know, he's been able to break that battle for fifth again. And you can see those guys are a little bit further back. It's going to be Daytona Anderson, Jason Uribe, with Jason Aguilar leading our Superstock category again. And here comes Uribe as he's going to try to go underneath Daytona. What's funny is that Daytona's racing against the bike here that he rode at the beginning of the year. So he's actually <laughs> racing against his own motorcycle. Daytona Anderson now his second ride on that Suzuki as Uribe with his foot down coming in from the CEB series in Spain. Very European riding style now to Uribe. So he's number 36 and the 104 is Daytona Anderson. And those guys are going in. This yeah, is, they are. This is as close. Daytona Anderson on the M4 Ridiculous Racing Suzuki and Jason Uribe on the Ridiculous Racing Yamaha. 
So ridiculous racing having a huge, playing a huge part in Super Sport, Super Stock 600 these days. Absolutely, and it's good to see that that they're you know they kind of spread themselves out a little bit. I know Daytona's been with them for a long time, and getting Jason back over here from uh, Spain has been has been great. So these two guys are battling with each other right now, and you can see just in our picture there, Jason Aguilar is uh, you know he's doing it again in Super Stock. <laughs> So Super Sport Machines have the white backing on the number plates and those blue numbers. That's an easy way to distinguish on the racetrack between Super Sport and Super Stock 600, which has red backing with yellow numbers. And of course, Super Sport leads the way, unchanged. Gerloff, J.D. Beach, and Valentin Bees with Benny Solis right in the mix. And this battle is going on for fifth spot between Jason Urebe, 36, and the 104 of Daytona Anderson. Yeah, we lost Shane Richardson on the lap ago, I believe. Greg, I saw his name going down our chart. He was running up there, uh, not too far away from uh, from Jason Aguilar. So just to give everybody out there, the guy, that, you know, Shane, who we were interviewing at the start of the race, just fell down our order. Going back in the field a little bit, number 55, that is Michael Gilbert. And Nick McFadden. Nick McFadden. Third in third spot. So McFadden, who's still nursing a broken collarbone, set for a podium position right now. McFadden on that M4 med age Suzuki, trying to compete with the 55 machine on that Team MG55 Yamaha of Michael Gilbert. So those riders battling out. And again, Super Sport is its own championship. And when you're racing in this class, Jason Aguilar, who's right now in seventh spot, he gets basically two points, like, or he gets uh, two different credit classes. for two different class points, yes. which is seventh overall, and right now, first in Super Stock 600. And so we have the ability to check those two points as they're happening. And, you know, Connor Blevins leads that championship in Super Stock 600, but Jason Aguilar is only two points back. So he's, he's right on the back of that battle for second, too, is. Greg. Yeah. 55-7-2, real fast for a Super Stock 600. <laughs> really back up front here with Garrett Gerloff and J.D. Beach on that Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha now putting about a second between themselves and Valentin DeBees, who's still holding on. Last time by each of those riders, all three of them doing 53s, 53-0 for Gerloff, 53-1 for Beach. 53-3 for the Bees. It seems like the heats actually helped the Suzuki. You know, the, the Yamahas don't seem to be getting away as much as they did yesterday. Uh, it's got to be a little bit encouraging for Valentin to see that he's got these guys not too far in front of him as we see a replay through our last couple, last section of the racetrack here. Both the Yamahas going into the last turn onto the front straightaway. Good looking, good look at the suspensions and the pumps here at Utah Motorsports Campus and how well that these Yamaha R6s were able to absorb those bumps. Here goes J.D. Beach. This is back to live pictures. And J.D. now doesn't want to follow any longer. And he will take over the lead, at least for the moment. Yeah, that's, and, you know, he's just, they're just going into turn five. The problem is, is you get such a good run on somebody through turn three and turn four, that if you get a run, it's, it's kind of hard not to want to try to pass them into turn five. I think that both these guys have figured out that nobody's getting away from each other. You know, the, the pace that they're running right now is kind of the pace that it's going to be. And uh, the, the only guy that's really going to pay for, uh, dividends from this is the guy in third. If, if Valentin can just get a little bit closer, I know how hard he's trying back there to do that. It's really easy for me in an air-conditioned room for me to sit here and say yeah, that, you know? Yeah. But uh, but if these guys continue to just to do this, if, if anybody makes any little bit of mistake, that's all it's going to take for him to get back up there a little bit closer. So J.D. Beach now leads the way from Garrett Gerloff. You can see for a moment there before the attitudes, it looked like J.D. had a little bit of something, but Gerloff was able to make it up on the brakes and through the attitudes. Gerloff bike just and the way, oh, J.D. Wow, <laughs> up and yep, out. Nice. We've seen it from J.D. before. That could be either a warning sign or J.D. knows that he was on the gas too hard. Well, the pace is just not where it was at yesterday. So it tells me that the track temperature that we talked about before the start of this race, I mean, great. They're doing 53-2, 53-6. Uh, and you see Garrett now pulling out of the draft. But the thing is, is that the heat in the track itself is not allowing the, the bikes to have as much grip, maybe mid-corner. And that's what we just saw with J.D. right there. So could that be the sign that J.D.'s starting to lose some traction on the rear end, or was it just a hiccup? J.D. Beach knows exactly what input he put in that motorcycle and started to spin it up. So 
Gerloff now with the lead again, about the halfway point of this race. We're getting really close to that spot as Valentin DeBees now just losing another couple of tenths of a second and losing touch with this battle. Let's take a look at the replay, what happened to JD. Here we go, he's on the edge of the tire, he's trying to accelerate. We saw it yesterday. He's just trying to pick the bike up off the edge of the tire, he's trying to give it a little bit of gas. And uh, the, 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 just, the grip just isn't there the way it was kind of yesterday. And, uh, you know, we saw the same thing yesterday with the foot off the peg, and he's able to kind of get that bike back underneath him. Didn't lose a position there, but definitely lost some drive as JD retook the, here, oh, here's a, or sorry, a replay of the pass for the lead and the situation that we're under right now as Garrett Gerloff went by JD. Down the front straight away again, and these guys are now off into the attitudes. And you can see Garrett opens that up just a little bit more than JD as they come into this little section. He opens that up just a little bit and uh, still, 53s, Greg, our 53 for our main, our three first guys are all in the threes. And then we go back to Benny. He's, he's in, he did a 54-3 as his best, but he's 55 flat. And even the pace beyond that, you know, we saw Jason Aguilar yesterday, 55 flat in super stock. Right now he's 55-8, 55-5. So it's just a little bit, a little bit uh, slower. Looking at the transitions, the way the bike goes from side to side. Sometimes it's called flickability here in motorcycle road racing. The new Dunlop tire that they brought to this race, it's a 180-60 tire versus a 255. That's part of the characteristic of the tire. More edge grip, more edge feel, and better flickability through the fast stuff. It really suits Garrett Gerloff's riding style, and he really enjoys how quickly he can get the motorcycle from side to side. I think you make a great point, you know, with the heat being up and not having to get on the gas, uh, he's going to be able to roll through the corners a little bit different than JD, maybe. And JD right now is just, uh, that's the biggest gap we have seen. Garrett's kind of looking right now to try to get a, a good, clear lap all to himself and just try to roll through these corners a little bit. So Garrett Gerloff leads the way now with the biggest gap we've seen in the race so far, just about three tenths of a second. JDB trying to close that gap. Here's uh, Caroline Olsen running in 15th spot, and she just got passed by Shane Richardson. So Shane Richardson gathered himself back up, and now he moves up to 15th position. He must have had a problem, maybe run off the track somewhere there, Greg. And uh, I know on Caroline's uh, behalf that the setup she's on right now is brand new. Like they, Bryce Prince, actually, who raced in the defending champion in the Superstock class, uh, came over and helped her a lot this morning and looked at some things and on the bike and said, hey, let's just try this, because she was experiencing some chatter. But this guy here, Shane Richardson, who I've just been unbelievably impressed with, they all have been this year. Uh, he's trying to come back through the pack um, after obviously running off the track a little bit earlier. He was right up behind Jason Aguilar, too, on the first two or three laps that I saw coming past our commentating booth here. And uh, so for, for him, he just ran off the track somewhere. He's making his way back through. Shane Richardson on that Palmetto Kawasaki ZX6R out of New Zealand. Next on the hit list is going to be Andrew Lee. Andrew Lee circulating the 58s and Shane Richardson about a second and a half quicker. And there's the big move. That's to take over 14th spot. And he's going to try to hold on to that position as Andrew Lee is feeling very racy at this point in a nice points paying position for Andrew Lee. But Andrew Lee's got Caroline Olsen to deal with right behind him. All right, so here we go back up front and the gap has grown now to 0.6 of a second. And Garrett Gerlach with the fastest lap of the race, a 52.860 on that last lap, lap number eight. So if JD Beach has anything in the tank at this point, he's really gonna have to dig deep and he's gonna have to do it by setting fastest lap pace. But this is exactly what I say. Garrett got that one lap where he could lead the whole way around roll through these corners mid corner like he likes to and not have to apply a lot of gas he and what i'm talking about there is he carries a lot of entry speed so he rolls that that speed all the way through the corner jd kind of like we've talked about in the past he likes to get in there square things up a little bit and squirt it out and right now he's having trouble doing that it looks like just just based off of what we can see here with the bike moving around a little bit a little look back here at jason uribe and jason aguilar both here you go again jason aguilar he's got a 4.4 second lead over michael gilbert and nick mcfadden and those guys in the Superstock pass, but uh, Daytona Anderson is back ahead of Jason Uribe, and I'm sure that battle is going to go to the line between those two also. So Jason Aguilar, who won his first race of the season last, uh, yesterday, looking to do the double, and Jason, we talked about at the top of the broadcast in terms of Superstock 600. Every, everybody who's won a race has done a double. 
So Nick McFadden did it at the first round. Michael Gilbert did it the second round. Connor Blevins the third round. And now if Jason Aguilar can hold it together in this one with a four and a half second lead, he's got the possibility of keeping that double win streak alive for the Super Stock 600 winners. And it's been amazing. I mean, this is what this class was about. We've had a different race winner every single track we've gone to. Yeah, and he's he really looks today like he's just He's really riding within himself. He's probably looking at his pit board. Uh, his lap times aren't quite as fast as they were yesterday, as we've seen throughout the field. That said, he's riding very smart. You can see Michael Gilbert in the background there. He's got a big lead on him. And uh, it's only a matter of time before Jason Aguilar won a race. He's been up front at a ton of races and uh, really has deserved to win a race earlier than he has. Here you get a good look at Michael Gilbert, who uh, is, I believe, second in our point standings coming into this round. Uh, coming into this round, Finished second also yesterday. Looks like he was third maybe in the standings, Rick. Sorry about that. No, 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 third. Yeah, he was second. Now he's third, but only six points back in the championship. Yeah, it's really close between him and Connor and Jason and, uh, and Nick. So and Nick, Nick's just fighting so hard. And you can see him in the background. He's got Connor Blevins right behind him right now as they come down this front straight away. But looking here at Michael Gilbert. Over. Here's the battle for third in Superstock. Oh, just behind this guy, so just behind Michael. Looked like Connor was trying to make a pass. And uh, But yeah, all, all our main four guys are running first through fourth right now in this championship. And here you go. It looks like Connor was able to get by Nick. And like I was saying, Nick is fighting really hard right now. And, and, and good on him for it because I know he's I know he's hurting still. He's not able to ride like himself. But he's just got to get through this weekend. And if he's to win this championship at the end of the year, he's going to be able to look back on this week and say, you know, I got two results there. And that was a big key. But that said, it looks like he's going to try to take another shot at Connor as they head into turn three or turn five. But uh, just a little bit too far back. Connor Blevins, number 37 out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma on the Excel Machines Racing Kawasaki ZX6R. Battling it up with number 16 on that is Owensboro, Kentucky native Nick McFadden on that M4 MedAge Suzuki. And that is the final podium spot as Nick has a look over his shoulder. So Nick right now trying to grit his teeth and hold on. And he is really going to want to get out of here, you know, by not re-injuring anything that's going on with his collarbone. And get a couple of weeks before we head off to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca in California. Back up front, Garrett Gerloff, J.D. Beach. Down to the beach, J.D. Beach with the fastest lap there of the race. Go. He's not giving up, folks, it's, not at all. And sometimes this is what it takes. You got to just kind of reset a little bit, reset some things, go, okay, what is this guy doing in front of me that might be a little bit different than me? And this is what's, you know, the, the intelligence of these riders to be able to adjust during the course of a race, see a pattern that might be happening in front of him. You can see J.D. turns in a lot earlier into turn two than does Garrett. Garrett runs a little bit wider line, even into turn three here. You can see the same thing. So we're... I if I look at that, our splits, Greg, the last splits were the exact same. We go back and have a quick look at the start of this race. Both the Yamahas had a little wheelie to Garrett. I saw his uh, just wheelie ever so slightly. Valentin did his best to get in the draft of those guys, as did Benny. Looking back at that field, four or five wide going into here, but real clean start by the first six or seven guys here. So that was a good look at the start of the race. and. Nice and clean as you see J.D. Beach likes to send it a little sideways when he snatches that brake lever. 95 J.D. number one Garrett Gerloff as Gerloff went underneath Beach a little bit wide on that one and then the fight started. So J.D. Beach right now on the comeback trail. He was about seven tenths of a second adrift of Garrett Gerloff just a lap ago and now Garrett Gerloff and J.D. Beach Gerloff's running for his life, but J.D. Beach looks like he's getting a little bit closer. Last time by the stripe, it was half a second, and it looks like Gerloff is kind of answering that. Yes, it does, and uh, you're exactly right. 52 eights uh, for, for, uh, for, for J.D. that last lap. 58 to 8 is the best lap for Garrett overall also, but he's just uh, he's just got just enough of a gap right now where he should be able to hold the lead down this front straightaway again. And, you know, J.D.'s just got to stay patient. He's got five laps to go. He's got to methodically just chew away at those tenths of a second that, that Garrett's been able to pull out on him. Uh, but it's not it's not big enough yet, Greg. To it's only points on half second. Garrett just gets a great drive. And look at the tuck. See how see how how Garrett's shoulders are down a little bit. JD JD's shoulders are just out ever so slightly, and it's just the difference in size between riders and things. Um, another good look here at Valentin De Bees. He's only eight he's eight seconds back. Yesterday I think he was 21 or 22 seconds back. So um, the bike must be a little bit better for him today. 
Benny Solis, again, another 13 seconds behind Valentin. So Benny's just doing his thing. He's the only Honda out here. Uh, it's good to see some red out there. He's got Callum Ventures on the side of his bike as his title sponsor this weekend. So it's good to see some uh, outside industry sponsor coming along. And then we got this battle. These two guys are still stuck together. Daytona Anderson and Jason Uribe. Um, just still kind of glued and then, you know, bringing Jason Aguilar with him, who also just went 55-3 the lap prior. So his pace is still incredible, Greg, just to be doing consistent 55s lap after lap. So Daytona Anderson in fifth spot overall right now, only his second ride on the Suzuki. Jay talked about it before, still getting used to the characteristics. As we have another look, look at the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's getting sideways. That's out of turn two, so he's just trying to dial on the dial on the gas the best he can, and uh, you know the bike's just getting a little bit loose on him. Yeah, a little light on the rear end of that motorcycle, and it certainly knows how to spin up. As the 36, Jason Uribe, in here from you know his first ride in the U.S. this season, doing a great job on that ridiculous Yamaha against that M4 ridiculous Suzuki. So Anderson and Uribe locked in this battle for fifth spot with Aguilar back there. Again, when you look at Jason uh, Aguilar, the big question is, does he really want to try to get one position? No, he's going to hold on to his deal. So here we go. We're back up front. And JD's closed that gap. He's got that gap. Let's see if the lap times are 52-6. Both riders in the 52s that time. Both riders. So the fuel load's gone down. Maybe it's made the bike just a little bit easier to ride. I'm not sure. But 52-6 for JD, 52-9 for Garrett Gerloff. So Garrett actually responded and got back in the 52s. And JD was able to just run a little bit quicker. So, uh, you know, this is the spot. Look where Garrett turns in. Look where JD turns in. You can see a difference. Now, when they go into turn three, this next left hander, you'll see Garrett starts a little bit wider than JD, even on the turn in point there. So just a little bit different angles of attack. And that's what's so great about our sport is that you can see two riders on the exact same bike, exact same team, do things a little bit different. Both ways are working just fine right now, as you just saw by both of them getting in the 52s again, Greg. All the props to Dunlop as well with this new tire, this new rear tire that's been heavily tested to be able to set the fastest lap of the race with 12, la 12 laps into this race. That's incredible. We're getting word that Benny Solis pulled oh. over. Oh, what a shame. Part what of the, happened there? Yeah. You He's know, part of the problem here with racing at the altitude that we're at and the extreme heat is keeping the motorcycle cool. Not sure if that's the issue with uh, Benny Solis, but that Honda CBR 600 is such a reliable machine that uh, it's very unusual to see that. Garrett Gerloff going through the attitudes there, uh, spinning up the rear tire there momentarily, trying to get the bike to get on the gas and down the hill. And that's another little slip up for Garrett Gerloff as the laps are winding down here in Super Sport, Super Stock 600, as JD Beach is getting ever so close. Now he's in a position to start thinking about his racecraft and how he's gonna pass Garrett Gerloff. Gerloff, next time by Jason, It'll be on his pit board. He'll get the information that his teammate is right on his tailpipe. And it gives you so much confidence as a rider when you see the leader in front of you starting to spin it or getting bucked out of the seat. JD's close enough now to take advantage of the draft as they come down the front straightaway. He's actually close enough this time. Both the Yamaha guys, all these guys got to eat together in the same tent and everything else. So they're both rooting for their guys, though. JD looks like, like you said, Greg, Garrett gets an amazing drive out of that last really corner. Does. And he's, the, the, JD's just not able to get close enough to him. JD's having to work the brakes so hard, but Garrett has got such a flow at this racetrack. Yep. Yeah, he really does. And this is kind of a track that's really, you know, there's, all these tracks are good for all these riders, but you can see this is kind of a track where Garrett likes to get out to the outside, get his bike set up, and get it turned. All right, JP, you're JD Beach right now. What are you thinking? Are you trying to do it now, or are you going to wait till the last lap? Well, we got two to go, and we got traffic coming up. I think if I'm JD, I want to get by and get to traffic first if it's possible. There's a lot of places on this track where you can block people. And, uh, you know, that it only looks like there's one maybe in front of them right now. But uh, for sure, if you can get to that, that lap traffic, first that's what you want to try to do Garrett Gerloff getting some really good drives even late in this race 192 Ryan Harper up front just ahead of them so the 192 machine on the motor shop entry motorcycle out of Santa Barbara California he's going to get a close a close look at the front of this race and they get it through the attitudes that might close things oh. up if Gerloff can't get around him look and it that. does look at Beach and it just got a big run on him, but it's going to make him extremely tight in here. He's got to be able to try to get off that turn with Garrett. So Greg is going to be the last lap thing. He's going to try to be close enough to draft him down that back straightaway, or that down this big, long front straightaway, rather, and uh, try to do something with him. And then he's going to have to run block. Now, the advantage to that is, is that Garrett likes to, JD likes to run 
fairly tight entries, but Garrett's so good through these last two turns, and the drive out of here, he's got to get the drive of his life to try to keep JD behind him. Here goes Garrett Gerloff. Here we come onto the front straightaway. Gerloff with another great drive out of this corner. JD beats, though. It looks like he got a decent run, but you can see the acceleration of Gerloff going higher in those RPMs at the moment. Can JD get a whiff of that draft? And that was a superior drive as we enter the final lap of this race. JD Beach has got to be thinking about it all. Oh, little deep into turn number one. We saw that the last lap. So Garrett Gerloff now with a bit of a gap. Can JD close it down? And there's more lap traffic ahead of him. Yes, there is. And that's the big thing is you got to be able to get through that lap traffic as is, is, is clean as you can. Right now, Garrett's got that gap, though, Greg. I think it's going to be extremely hard for JD to do anything with him. Uh, he's going to have to do a lot of closing up here. And then he's going to have to get a little bit lucky. Look at Garrett being so smart. Gets through that first split faster than anybody. Now, he went a little bit tighter there. Oh, 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 oh he loses the front and saves it, Greg. Wow. Wow. Now, that's going to open the door for JD into this next right. So here comes J.D. Beach. He's trying to put it underneath his teammate. He can't do it. So Gerlach, oh, there he goes. Oh, and they touch. Oh, oh and they, they go down. down. Oh, wow. Oh. Valentin to Bees. This is your chance. You can get back in the championship. We've kind of been waiting for something like this to happen, but we really didn't think it was going to. That was just strictly a bummer for both of these guys. Yeah, and the bikes are locked together as both of them are trying to get the bikes up and off each other. So that's going to leave the door open for Valentin to Bees, who's been there the whole time as the white flag flies. These two riders that are leading this championship have crashed out of race number two. Wow. I wonder what the conversation is right now. <laughs> and that, that, yeah. You know, and as the riders, and because they're, just, they're the, stuck together, the top the, 15 pay points, and so they're trying to get some yeah, some corner oh workers gosh. to help them out, trying to get these bikes. It looks like apart. it's on fire. It's on fire, Greg. One of the bikes is on fire. It looks like they're kicking the thing, trying to get it on fire. Valentin is just going to say, "Hey, I just got 25 points. These guys are going to get none." So the rider from France on that M4X Star Suzuki, Valentin de Bees, has played it right on this one. He rode within his race, did everything he could to stay with the leaders early on. He saw the crash, you can see right now, he is on cruise control, waving to the fans, as it's going to go to Valentin de Bees, will take victory here as he tries to, <laughs> that's trash there's not, control. There's not, a, there's not enough uh, air in the, up here for the bike to make enough horsepower to do a wheelie, but Plus, uh, hey, we're going to see a little different Valentin in the pit, in the winter circle today than we did yesterday for sure. You see Garrett got up now. Daytona Anderson's going to beat his bike across the line as he's going to come home in second. And Jason Uribe, all the way from Spain, is going to get himself up there on the podium also to finish third. So there you go. <laughs> Who would have thought that this would be the podium? Wow. Jason Aguilar, congratulations on doing the double. You see him back there finishing fourth overall and uh, winning Superstock again today. I'm looking for the battle for second. Here comes Michael Gilbert. Is going to finish second and Nick McFadden what a tremendous job to put yourself on the podium against Connor Blevins gets him at the end of the race how about the M4 team they have M4 Med Age Suzuki M4 Ridiculous Racing M4 X-Star <laughs> they're going to fill three spots on the podium what an incredible run as these two riders are trying to make their way back to start finish line Shane Richards is in in 11th again 15th pays points so it's down to Caroline Olsen finishes 12th, Ezra Bobier 13th, Andrew Lee in 14th, and Gage Reese will finish in 15th spot. So Derek Gerloff now is just riding for a number, you know, in terms of the points paying position, both of those riders are going to score zero points. So congratulations. I mean, there's, what what a host hey, of Superstock riders. There's some standouts there. Nolan Lampkin, awesome job. Tenth, he's been he came through both our last chance qualifiers this weekend. Didn't qualify on time. This young man went out and finished tenth in this race overall. And I believe he's like top six or seven Superstock. That's his best result of the year. You know, JD and Garrett are such class acts. I'm sure there's not going to be too much animosity. Garrett lost the front so big in turn yeah. five, and then JD goes in and loses the front in turn six. So what does this mean for the championship? Well, J.D. Beach comes in to this race with one point over Garrett Gerloff. That is not going to change. Benny Solis, who scored zero points, is 61 back. So Valentin DeBees, who is 73, that's almost three full races, he's just going to claw his way back in to within two race points. So he'll probably pole vault in front of Benny Solis and take over third in the championship. So no huge ramifications. 
for the battle for the number one place. The thing is, Greg, is that this can happen in any weekend because these two guys are so close together. Now you're going to see. Now I want you to pay attention. You watch Garrett's outside foot. He's going to lose the front. His outside foot's going to come off. That's just saving it, folks. That's just grit and determination, letting those gyros continue to spin forward. Now they're going to come in here. JD's going to have a go. And the same exact thing's going to happen. He's going to go underneath Garrett, but they just touch a little bit and Garrett and JD loses the front. Now that's going to be caused only because when those two guys touched, it just took a little bit of weight off the front tire of JD's bike. So right here, everything's good. Now JD, JD sees the opening. He goes for the opening. They touch. That takes the weight off the front tire of JD's bike. That takes them both out. Now, with it being so close and those bikes being so hot, I wouldn't be surprised if something welded to something else. That's why they <laughs> couldn't pick the bikes up. No kidding. Yeah, I've mean, seen it happen. I've yeah. seen it happen. Yeah. I mean, there's so much heat generated by these motorcycles. One thing you never want to do is put your hand on a foot peg after a motorcycle Correct. comes off the racetrack. What a turn of events here. I'm sure a very happy Valentin de Bees as he wins this race. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from him. Don't go anywhere. There's more coming here on DN Sports. about two minutes and 30 seconds. Go to the fridge, get yourself a nice cold water and dump it over your head because that was hot race action and what an unexpected finish on the last lap. Let's get down to Hannah who has more of what happened. I'm down here with our race winner today, Valentin DeBees. A crash at the last minute and Valentin was next in line to take the podium. A much happier Valentin today than yesterday. Tell us about your race. Oui, ma course elle était pas mal. Ah, sorry, I speak in English. I don't want to make <laughs> mistakes like yesterday. Um, first of all, I would like to apologize for yesterday, what I say. Um, people didn't understand, but um, the mistake, it was my own mistake because I, 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 I uh, chose to change the bike, the setup of the bike before the race. That was my choice. My mechanic didn't, didn't approve, so when I was pissed off of, of me and myself only, so I want just to make everything clear. Uh, about today, today race, uh, we changed again the setup uh, this morning, and I wasn't still happy. Then we changed again uh, during the race, and uh, this time, yeah, the bike worked really well, and I was able to stay with uh, with the Yamaha boy during four or five laps, which which was a, a really big step forward for me. So that's the way to go. And uh, yeah, they did a mistake at the end, but you know, I take it. That's racing. Uh, in VIA, I crashed twice, and that time it's their mistake. So yeah, so. Happy and uh, and hopefully uh, we'll get some more win again. And uh, really thanks to my M4 Suzuki uh, X Star team. They make a really great job. And uh, once again, I really love my mechanic, and I will never say bad stuff about them. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. At least he's apologetic about it, and a well-deserved win again today. No, Hannah, no doubt about it. Plus, Jason, <laughs> winning solves everything, doesn't it? It certainly makes Especially everybody feel better. You're not going to get a letter on Monday now, maybe. Although I'm sure he got to talk to last night. But you know what? To be fair, the guy speak in a second language. He was mad at himself probably yesterday. It's always yep. going to come across a little bit different. Uh, I'm sure if he could have spoke in French, it would have come across maybe a little bit different. But congratulations to him. And he's 100% right. People are going to look back at this race and go, oh, he got lucky. He didn't get lucky. Huh? He was there. Oh, yep. He fell off at VIR twice and handed some podiums to some people that maybe otherwise wouldn't have gotten them. So it is racing, and that's why you got to do all 15 laps. And we don't see those Yamaha guys make those mistakes very often. Today was just the day they did, that they did. And another rider who made out and gets a stand on the podium is Daytona Anderson, and he is with Hannah. This is actually Daytona's first ever podium, so he is really, really excited right now. Tell us about your race, Daytona. Uh, I got off to a not so great start, but uh, we had a really good battle with Jason uh, Uribe the whole time. Uh, I persevered through the end, and I actually didn't even know I got second. I thought I was in fourth still, so I came into the pit, and they were like, you got second, you got second. <laughs> so I'm just so excited. I can't thank the whole M4 Rick Day, this racing Suzuki team enough. Uh, they put so much behind me, and uh, Josh and Adam. I mean, without those guys, I wouldn't be here right now, so I can't thank them enough, and I can't wait to be up here again. Great job. Thanks, Daytona. Thank All right, congratulations to the Riverside, California resident on that M4 Ridiculous Racing and motorcycle. That's great. I've seen him a lot out of Chuck Walla over the years, and I've seen him have a lot of bad luck. And, uh, you know, this is what these kids need. If they get that, he's got a sniff of the podium now. doesn't matter how he got it. He got a sniff of it today, and he's going to want to get back there. And uh, here's another guy, too. Yeah, out of Napa Valley, California, but racing in Spain. And he stands on the podium here in Utah. He's with Hannah. This is his first time back, Jason Uribe, in the Moto America Series this season. Third place finish. Bet you weren't expecting that. How are you feeling right now? 
I'm pumped. I'm so thankful to be on the podium. You know, this thing all kind of came together at the last second, but super thankful to the ridiculous racing crew. They made it all happen. I had a great fight with Daytona. It was, it was fun. It was really a rider's battle. You know, it was a little bit, his bike was a bit faster on the straights, but I could get him on the braking zones and just tried my best to stay smooth, stay consistent, and super thankful to finish third. Thanks, Jason. Congrats. Thank you. All right, what a race finish here. It's Valentin DeBees, Daytona Anderson, and Jason Reed. Two riders you've never seen on the podium before, and they do it. There's Jason on the 36, Daytona on the 104. Yep, and it's great. You know, to see some fresh faces and some new people up on the podium, that's what we need here. We need we need some diversity in that regard, and, and I think with uh, two guys uh, putting on the podium, that's great. Let's take a look at the race results here. Powered by Dunlop, it's Valentin DeBees over Daytona Anderson, Jason Uribe, Jason Aguilar, Michael Gilbert. Of course, now you're looking at all Super Stock 600 riders and Nick McFadden, that's your podium for Super Stock 600. Connor Blevins just off the box. Uh, Braden Ort, JC Camacho, who had a good run yesterday. He'll finish up ninth overall on the day. And uh, you can see a, a host of different manufacturers and different countries. As we look at Nolan Lampkin in the top 10, Shane Richardson recovering. Caroline Olson, that's ninth place for her in Superstock 612th, perhaps uh, one of her best finishes yeah, of the year. Yeah, definitely overall, that's one of her best finishes. Ezra Bobier, great to see him. He put a last lap charge on. Something happened to him mid-race. He went 56-9 on his last lap. Andrew Lee, 14th. Gage Reeds, great to see Gage Reeds get a top 15. He deserves that. Robert Pierce, again, great job by him. And we see in 17th there, Garrett Gerloff. And that doesn't happen very often, so we pay back from uh, all the way back to 15th spot, which is one point. And here's a look at the championship standings for the Super Spot, uh, Super Sport class presented by Liquid Molly. And it is uh, a very, very interesting battle up top as JD Beach and Garrett Gerloff split it by one. And it's Valentin DeBees who's going to get in the mix there and be in third spot. So we get a good shot at the podium right now, a good podium spot. Standing on top, Keith. Great to see Keith Perry up there, huh? Uh, Keith oh, great. Perry He's been around there. for so long with that team, and it's just so cool to see him up there. A good look at Valentin DeBees with on the last lap. I'm sure when he started it, he wasn't expecting to be on the very top uh, spot on the podium, but he stands there now. We'll take a break here on B in Sports. On the other side, we have more from Utah. Welcome back to a crazy race. Just finished up in Super Sport Super Stock 600. As we take a look at the celebrations going on here for the Super Sport class with Valentin DeBees, Daytona Anderson, and Jason Uribe finishing a butt in fourth overall and winning Super Stock 600 class and doing the double. Jason Aguilar, he's with Hannah. That's right, he did. He's keeping the streak alive. Everyone that's won a race in the 600 class this this season so far has done the double. So I, I was speaking to you a little bit earlier. You said you weren't expecting it, and if you had pushed a little bit harder, you might be up on the other podium over there, but you wanted to play it safe, get your first place points. Tell us about your race. Uh, it was a really good race. Got off to a good start again. I kind of struggled a little bit on a full fuel load, so the two, uh, the two ridiculous guys got around me, and then they kind of started pulling a gap. I put down a couple good laps and then I saw my pit port had a big gap and I was like, honestly, I don't need to go for these guys. I'm just going to take the win and take the points. So I just kind of cruised it in and just paced myself. So it was a really good race. Um, I'm kind of surprised again that I'm up here, but hey, I'll take it. Uh, got away with the weekend with 50 points, so championship lead. I'm stoked with that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to Jason Aguilar, fourth overall, and the points lead leaving here, Utah Motorsports Campus, and it's on to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca in a couple weeks' time. A very different, different racetrack. So good job by Jason to stay focused all weekend long, and like he said, collect a full 50 points. Yep. Well, yep. that's great job. Yep. The Super Sport, Super Stock 600 race is done. Moto America is on being sports was presented by Dunlop and the all-new Sportmax Q3 Plus. Now you don't have to sacrifice mileage to get top performance. Dunlop Q3 Plus and powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll.